What is going on guys and welcome back to another video. Now, I have basically next to no content to bring to you guys, to bring to YouTube, to bring to my channel. Um, I didn't even take the camera to the Arnolds, which I don't really regret because it was so busy and there was like not really that much chance to um, kind of film anything or vlog anything. Like it was really, really, really busy. And it was such a good weekend, like don't get me wrong, it was crazy, crazy, crazy busy in a good way. There was so many people that you were just getting to meet and it was it was very similar to FedEx in a way that it was just so good to see everybody come together but it was like, there was that many more people if that makes sense. There was a few people that wasn't at FedEx that I got to see at the Arnold's which again was very, very, very good. Got to see obviously the likes of um, my kind of, more so my full on circle that obviously comes from the support side on like Instagram and things like that which again is really good because these are the kind of people that you stay in contact with quite a bit but at the same time 
you never really see them so it's always good when obviously you can see people like that in the flesh and you can stand and talk to them and what feels like ages you can just literally go on and on and on so again it was a really good weekend successful in that terms unsuccessful in some other terms but we'll just kind of leave that there um so yeah I thought what better to do than bring a QA and a to the channel, I literally just stuck up a, a questionnaire box thing on my Instagram, if you've never seen that then you probably don't follow me on Instagram, what I will do is I will just stick the link to my Instagram in the description box below, it'll actually be the top link, so shoot over there, um, hit that big fat follow button, realistically I'm probably going to follow you back because I'm not um, that big of an influencer, I don't have a million followers, so it's probably a high case of me following you back. Yeah, we're going to do a Q&A. I got quite a few questions, but I will just kind of go through more or less as many as I can without rambling on to the point where I've been talking for like 40 minutes and you get bored and don't watch the video. But that's going to be it. I do hope you guys do enjoy this one. If you do enjoy it, oh, and just before I do go on with that, I will include yesterday's shoulder session, which again was my first session after the Arnold's. So it was shoulders, but did go in. It was just a case of an in and out job more than anything else. Um, I didn't want to go in and talk to the camera for ages, I didn't want to go in and go over exercises or even really focus too hard on the exercises, it was just a case of wanting to go in and really just get after some weight, move some weight, implement intensity strategies that would just take sets even further and further and further. So that's what we've done, we implemented quite a few drop sets, um, especially on things like dumbbell shoulder press and that, which you will see. I will just put it all together, I won't make it into like a 10 minute long video that's going to be separate to this, I will just literally put the clips together and you guys can see most of the top sets. I'll try and include the top sets without any form of music or anything like that, but the worst of it is they always get done for copyrights, so that'll probably not happen. Um, but the session will get included. Before I do ramble on, guys, I do hope you enjoy this one. If you do enjoy it, then please don't forget to drop the video a like for me. Let's try and smash 150 likes. Yeah, I'm going to call it 150 likes. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you are new. And let's get on with this Q&A. Nice and easy one from Max underscore Wilcox 16. How long have you been training? I've been training for seven years this year. I believe we're moving into the eighth year, which is madness because it's so close to 10 years now of actual training. Now, I know that a lot of people will be kind of asking, oh, how long have you been training seriously? And you do get a lot of people that's like, oh, I've been training 10 years, but I've only been training like three years seriously. I think it would have took me up until when I started bodybuilding to kind of take more into obviously the training side of things. Don't get me wrong, I always looked to go in and train heavy, I always looked to go in and train hard. I would just go in and lift as heavy as I could, that's the way I kind of treated training. Um, but more so looking towards the kind of strategized side of things and what I was going to train here and what I was going to train there and what exercises I was going to do here and there, that kind of changed up. Um, and what body parts as well. I've always done the bro split, I've always had that kind of approach and I've always stuck to the heavy basics that's never changed but at the same time you just kind of always learn like that this is just an endless learning game and, and there's never going to be a chance where you get to the point and you think right that's me i've learned everything that's kind of it. it's always going to be a case of it's just endless possibilities to learn something new every day so yeah that's going to be the the thing with training as well um i am at the point where i'm very happy with how training is and i'm very happy where i am at with training and how i've progressed in training but at the same time, there's always going to be that room, that small bit of room for more. That's always going to be the case. Socrates underscore supplement stack in the off season. Now, I cover this in most videos. Um, everything really kind of stays the same. All of my supplements are from Unrivaled and HR Labs. Again, I will drop the link to both of them websites in the description box below. I do actually have a personal discount code for HR Labs, which is just Kiffy15. That gets you, I believe, 15% off. I might be wrong, um, but I believe I'm right. So yeah, supplements are all from HR Labs and Unrivaled Unrivaled, which is the AGF Protein and the Rapid Recovery Shake, which I take in post-workout every single day. Um, HR Labs, we are looking at pre-workouts, which is DFib, Basic, which is the saturation drink, No Code, which is the essential amino acid, Intra Carb, which is just carb up and level up, and ride on which is the pump formula which i'm actually out of right now but it is coming back in stock because i do receive quite a few questions um regarding ride on and when it's coming back in stock liam has confirmed that it is coming back in very 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 soon hopefully within the kind of next week or so um just kind of keep an eye out obviously on the website and my instagram i will share it i will do everything i can just to kind of get that kind of word out there that it is back in but i think that's it i'm sure i've not forgot anything 
nah, I've definitely not forgot anything. I do also take a multivitamin, but that is literally it. No other supplements. I don't take a million things in intracession. I don't have to add lots of things from different supplements. All of my stuff that I need, especially for intra, is in my intra carb and in my no code. And as well, things like my saturation drink and that as well. That obviously includes things like creatine and that. So everything is really all within that. I don't have a million supplements that I need to take five grams from this, five from this, five from this, five from this. I literally couldn't be arsed with that. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, so yeah, that's where all of my supplements are from. That is my supplement stack. That's all I take. I don't take anything else. I don't take any magic pills. I don't take anything at all. Everything's from Unrivaled and everything's from HR Labs. Stos Kuras. I've probably said that wrong, but I mean, I don't even want to spell it out. Training to failure using top sets, back off sets at the compounds is beneficial for beginners. As a beginner, it's hard because you can either be a beginner where you're at the very, very, very day one of your training or you can be a beginner where you're literally a year or two years into training. It's a hard one. I, I would recommend it. I'm not saying that it's wrong. Um, there just is other ways to kind of work around training other than just implementing a top set and a back off set because realistically, are you going to kind of know where your main baseline numbers are for everything to kind of find these top and back off sets? Probably not if you are at the very start. Um, again, if you are like maybe a year, year and a half in and you have actually been taking your training series and you've actually been focusing on your training, then yes, absolutely, I would recommend that. And especially the way that you would approach a top set and a back off set, if it's done right, then again, absolutely, I would recommend that. But sometimes people can kind of um, take the wrong approach with them and just kind of do a top set very close to a back off set or, or vice versa, a back off set very close to a top set in terms of weight that's going to be one of the biggest things it's just knowing where to to take the weights from from a back off set like you don't want to be doing a top set of for example 180 kilo deadlifts and then doing a back off set of 170 kilo deadlifts it's just making the right decisions within them and sometimes from a beginner standpoint you're not going to make all of the right decisions so if you are a beginner and you don't have a coach, then I would recommend a coach if you're looking towards that kind of approach of training. If you don't have a coach, then I would probably more so just look towards the aspect of training hard more than anything else. And instead of just kind of focusing on how many sets to do here, how many sets to do there, I would focus more on the approach of actual training with intent more than just training trying to find the best rep ranges, trying to find the best sets, trying to find the, the best strategy. That's That's the kind of... A thing that I absolutely, I, I'm not going to say I hate to see it, but I do, it's just so hard to see that nowadays because there's that much modern day stuff that's been implemented into the industry of just fitness in general that so many people are buying into it and especially so many beginners because there's so many new people coming up and instead of actually looking towards just training hard, everybody's looking for all of these silly little things that's gonna that they think is going to get them to that point where they are going to be training hard and unfortunately that's not going to be the case they're just going to get brainwashed by all of this stuff overcomplicate all of this stuff and never get to the aspect of just hard training but like i said training to failure using top and back offsets i would recommend it just depends where you're at as a beginner and it's just all about making the right decisions Bray mazzoli thoughts on vibrams working out I am not a fan of Vibrams. Yeah, I'm not a fan of Vibrams. You'll never see me wearing Vibrams. I just... Nah. They're just absolutely not for me. Ibe underscore fitness UK. Approx, how many weeks would you prep for a show? Right, that's actually a very good question. Now, this totally depends. Realistically, this is going to come down to how fat you are at the start of your prep. That's always going to be the case. How much fat you are carrying, moving into a prep, a contest preparation phase, it's going to like dictate straight away how long you're going to have to diet for. Especially, well, I mean, I say that it's going to work towards both enhanced and obviously natural athletes. Natural athletes a little bit more because we moving into a diet phase, we can't grow into a show. We don't have so. What I'm going to do is I'll answer this from a natural standpoint and I'll answer this from an enhanced standpoint. So. From an actual standpoint first, moving into a contest prep phase, a diet phase, a calorie deficit more so, we don't have anything to help us grow into a show. So once we move into a deficit, we, we've stopped growing, we've stopped the, the off-season phase, we've stopped anything to do with that. So if you think about it, the goal is always to reach stage retaining as much muscle tissue as possible that we've built in the off-season. Now, dieting for 
eight weeks, 10 weeks, trying to get in shape within that amount of time, you're going to have to approach that phase very, very, very aggressively and cut calories to the point where you're eating next to nothing. You're going to have to expend a million calories because obviously you've literally only gave yourself eight weeks to get in shape. So if you think about it that way, the more chance of your body eating into muscle tissue and just wiping away all that muscle tissue is going to happen. That's going to be a very high chance. Whereas if you give yourself an extra good amount of weeks, for example, I would always recommend for myself anyway, I always look for between the kind of 20 to 26 week mark for a preparation phase. Um, again, that is just the way that we've always done it and that's the way that we feel that's been right. And again, from where I have been at the start of prep, that's kind of what we thought would be the right amount of time. Now, don't get me wrong, there's always a kind of chance of you coming in shape a little bit earlier or giving yourself an extra bit of time. Or even at that, you could literally get to the point where you've dieted for 26 weeks and you're maybe still not there. But at the same time, it's the kind of 20 to 26 week mark that personally for me, that's where I work from. And that's probably what I would recommend for a natural athlete especially where you're going to be carrying a little bit of fat starting off from prep. You're not going to be going into prep in good shape, but also if you go into shape very, very, very out of shape and you're holding like lots and lots and lots of fat, then realistically you may need a little bit more just to obviously take the kind of unnecessary weight off first and then take the body fat off. So you've got to try and not get them too mixed up between the weight and the body fat. So that's why always there's differences between like a weight loss phase and a fat loss phase. Like that's one of the biggest things that is easily mixed up and you can understand why, but at the same time, you just need to make sure that you don't get them mixed up. It's gonna always depend on how much fat you're carrying. That's gonna dictate how long you need to prep. Um, especially moving like to the side of that, as an enhanced athlete, obviously I am not an enhanced athlete and if anybody is an enhanced athlete watching this video and you want to correct anything that I say or call me out on anything, then that's perfectly fine because I am not an enhanced athlete and everything I say might not be 100% spot on, but from what my knowledge is and from what I know, enhanced athletes can grow into a show. They don't need to diet for 20 to 26 weeks. Majority of the enhanced athletes I know have dieted upwards of to kind of 16 weeks and that's been it. So it's just a case of knowing them differences between anything. Like it, the approach is still the same. You still, as an enhanced athlete, sorry, um, just to make sure that that's clear, you still need to diet hard. It is still going to suck. You're still going to be tired. You're still going to be sore. It, all of that's going to be the same. It's just the kind of time frames that are going to be different um, between a natural athlete and an enhanced athlete. Just simply down to the fact that Having that extra assistance is obviously going to be able to cut the time a little bit off. Especially if you're only doing one show. If you're going to be doing more shows, then again, you are going to be dieting for a little bit longer just due to the fact that you are going show to show to show. But if you're only doing one show, um, you are going to like differentiate from obviously only dieting for 12 to 16 weeks to dieting for... 20 to 26 weeks that's going to be the difference so it all depends on how much body fat you're carrying as a natural athlete and an enhanced athlete that's always going to be the dictator of how long you have to prep but just always know that them two kind of things come into play and and they are always going to be different it's not going to be the same for everybody for me i might diet 20 to 26 weeks somebody else might diet 24 weeks somebody else might diet 22 18 it's never the same it is never going to be the same i know people that only diet for a little amount of time they end up not coming in shape and that's obviously down to the fact that they've not dieted long enough. That's always going to be the thing. Um, but yeah, all depends on how much fat you're carrying, where you're at with things, how many shows you're going to do, whether you're natural, whether you're not natural. All of these things come into play. Brutal Vader, how do you alternate squats and deads variations to advance in the major lifts? EX week one, you try to, I believe that question might be continued. But I'm just going to cover how to alternate deadlifts and squat variations to advance um, in the same week. So for me, for example, I always space them out more or less. You're, you're kind of three to four days between both of them. Now, I did run deadlifts for a while on a Saturday and then I would squat on a Monday. Sometimes on a Tuesday, but usually I would squat on a Monday, which again is only leaving one day in between. But I got to the point where my recovery was perfect enough to do that realistically that's not going to be the case for everybody um i could easily get to the point where that wasn't the case for me but at the same time i managed to get into that point where my body would adapt to that recovery time and that worked so that's why i kept it only one day but now for example i will try and keep them at least two days 
just to make sure that it's more or less my, my lower back that's going to be recovered more than anything. That's all I look for, my back just recovering from deadlifts. And even if it works out vice versa that I have done legs potentially before deadlifts, then again, I'm just going to be looking at especially my hamstrings. Usually they take the most beatings. So if I go into a deadlift session and my hamstrings are still quite tight, they're still quite sore, I'm still suffering from them, then usually what I'll find is I won't get that much leg drive. I will just instantly pull the weight and my hips will shoot up and, and don't get me wrong it won't put me off to the point where I won't deadlift it'll just be annoying because I know that I won't be 100% but the biggest thing here is the, the only way to alternate them and still progress on them in the same week is just to make sure that you give them enough time and especially out with these sessions take your sessions all the way that that's never going to be a thing I'm never going to say take a back seat in other sessions just nail every variable outside of training that being your rest recovery, that being your sleep, that being your eating, that being everything to do with that. Make sure that that's on point and then you should be able to work out your progressively overload approach, which I'm assuming you're going to do on your squat and deadlifts in the same week. They should work perfect. I don't see why they can't be done in the same week. I've literally done them in the same week, going back to question one for the past seven or eight years and... I've still been able to progress, don't get me wrong, there's been loads of sessions where the progression's not been there, but I've still been able to perform a very high set, I've still been able to perform and get strong in all rep ranges, and that's another one as well, just to make sure that you can do them in the same week doesn't necessarily mean that you have to do one rep maxes every single session, like that is literally just going to end you, so get strong at all rep ranges, do all rep ranges, perform low rep ranges, perform high rep ranges, you can always progress, that's always going to be one of the things, perform different intensity strategies such as pause reps, perform tempo reps, perform deaths, deadlifts, there's always going to be a way, but nobody sees that and nobody thinks you can squat a deadlift in the same week, so yeah, not going to ramble on any more than that, just implement all that stuff, don't let any of the modern day brainwash bullshit get on top of you and tell you they can't do that, but you can do it, and I'm an actual bodybuilder, I do it every single week, yeah, let's move on. Orange dot then Duven, T-bar row or bent over row, I'm actually a fan of both of these, recently I have been working with a barbell bent over row and a chest supported T-bar row. Just because I've kind of found my way with the chest supported T-bar row and it's actually felt very good. I've been able to perform it like a low row more than anything else. So I've actually been taking pretty similar benefits from it towards what I would take from a barbell bent over row. But realistically, nothing's going to ever challenge or beat a barbell bent over row. In my opinion anyway, don't get me wrong, everybody's going to have their opinion and everybody will say that it sucks. And the other half of everybody will say that it's a very good move. But... From the old school side of things and the way that I've kind of been brought up and the way that I've trained, that is always going to be one of my big main moves is the barbell bent over row or not even the barbell bent over row. I like to just kind of call it a barbell row because if you call it a bent over row, you're guaranteed to get called out on the fact that you weren't bent over and you weren't doing it right and all of that rubbish. So yeah, barbell row is always going to be for me. T-bar row, I am still a fan of free weighted. But recently, I have obviously had access to a chest supported T bar row in which I found a good momentum with it. That's what I'm going to say. I found a good momentum with it. I'm going to run it to the point where it feels not so good. And then I'll basically bring it out, bring the free weighted T bar row back in, and then we'll move from there. I'm literally not even going to bother trying to say that name. Not even going to spell it out. How many sets a week for arms? Advice for the advanced again this is going to depend in fact i'm just going to use this as last and final question because i do see that we have got over 20 minutes and i'm not going to keep you guys forever so how many sets for arms for the advanced now this is going to again depend on if your arms are a lagging body part if your arms are maybe a good body part you maybe don't need as much frequency as somebody who's got noodle arms somebody's got their shit arms somebody's got small arms that's going to be, that's going to be a big dictator how much frequency you need do you need an arm day do you not need an arm day it's a hard one. It's always just going to come down to whether they are a good body part or not. I'm not going to say that you need to implement lots and lots and lots of sets. For me, for example, I do train arms every single day, but that's not a full arm session every single day. What I do is I literally just implement between four and six sets of arms after every session. Excluding legs, I don't really like to kind of... I used to always chuck in a little bit of arms either at the start or the end of legs, but I just kind of got to the point where... I knew that it was coming up and I kind of just dreaded it and dreaded it and dreaded it and obviously I got to the point where my arms weren't a lagging body part so I just kind of eliminated them from legs. So I do obviously have them in at the end of every single other session, that being chest, that being shoulders, back, 
Everything I do also do an alternative farm day, which is on a Friday, which is the so-called active rest day. But at the same time, it's just going to come down to whether you need that extra frequency or not. That there's no there's no specific best way to train arms. There's no specific best reps and sets to train arms with. How you train them again, I would always recommend just hitting your arms from all angles. Don't worry about hitting the long head, the head of the triceps. Don't worry about hitting each head of the biceps. Don't worry about doing this form away. Just train arms. Treat arms the way that you would treat any other body part. It's the exact same as things like abs and calves that everybody forgets about. Just treat them the way you would treat every single other body part. Do the amount that you feel is necessary. Find how much you recover from. That's going to be, again, if you wake up and your arms are fucking dead and you can't move them, then you've probably done a little bit too much. If you wake up and they're feeling fresh as fuck, then you could probably add in another set or two. It's always going to come down to that. You're always going to be trying to find that kind of happy medium between that, what you can recover from. Are they growing? Are they not growing? Take pictures, monitor your progression. Are you progressing on the weights? Are you progressing inch-wise on your arms? How's things looking? That's always going to be the dictator of how you can plan out your arm days, how you can plan out your arm sessions or, for example, just the sets and reps that you're going to implement at the end of the sessions. But yeah, that's what it's always going to come down to. I, I'm just going to call it a day on that one, guys. I don't want to ramble on anymore. I don't want to talk any more rubbish. I do hope you guys have enjoyed this one. It has just been a kind of random Q&A, but I do think I've covered quite a few good questions, especially the one down to contest preparations as everybody is moving into their off season there is a lot of people looking to compete next year which is going to be a massive one me myself i am also getting back up on stage next year which i am very much looking forward to it's going to be good we do have another what oh my god what month is it we are in october already so we've got october november december january february march april potentially another six months in the off season half a year in the off season to grow wow and then we'll be looking at preps. So yeah, be looking to get back on stage at the back end of next year. I'm looking forward to it. That's going to be it. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did enjoy it, then please don't forget to drop the video a like for me, guys. Subscribe to the channel if you are new because we are still growing. And I will see you all in the next video.